Hey guys, a few weeks ago I gave you sort of a sneak peek of the next updates to the Minty Pie project. Well now Helder is starting to send out his pre-orders, and as a side note, he ordered a bigger batch this time and he still has some left, so if you've been watching for them to be available again, definitely go check that out. And then I've been working on getting pre-orders for the updated 3D printed parts shipped out, so I thought now would be a good time to do a video showing you everything that you need to know about using the latest parts to put together a Minty Pie. And I've also been hard at work along with Hulihu on some pretty big updates to the Retro Pie installation used on the Minty Pie, with some really nice unannounced features that I'll get to here in a bit as well. Now it didn't make a whole lot of sense to do an entire build guide from start to finish because a lot of it has remained the same from previous versions of parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the timestamps that you can jump to in the old build guide to see the parts that I've already covered and will be skipping over. I know that that might annoy some people, but it would have taken a lot longer to put this video together if I showed you every little thing all over again. So I've got all my parts here. This time I'm going with wintergreen flavor. Got the latest parts from Helder, which includes an IPS screen that is already attached to the screen board, a button PCB with an integrated battery monitor on the back. Now this is actually a prototype of this version. He just got his parts in, so the actual final version that people will be getting is actually blue. And then there's one other feature that he added after he sent me this that I'll get to here in a little bit. Got the same USB sound card, which we won't have to remove the crystal from this time. The cheaper battery charger, same power switch, same speaker, same battery, got my updated 3D printed parts here, which you'll notice the lack of screws on the bezel this time. And then this time I'm going with some red buttons, which I should have in stock soon, so keep an eye out for that as well. And that's it. Hopefully this video won't be too long, since I'm only going to be showing you the parts that have changed. So let's get started. All right, so starting with the tin here, just like last time, I've already got my holes filed out here, and really the only difference from last time is the placement of the micro USB port. It slid in just a little bit, so I've updated the drill guide to accommodate that. And then I've also updated the hole guides on the back to make it a little bit easier to mark where you need to drill your holes for the L and R buttons. So I've got my L and R buttons all wired up and I've got my base plate put in there and attached to the bottom of the tent. So now I'm ready to go ahead and attach the screen back plate. But before doing that, I wanted to show you a couple things about these new 3D printed parts. The way that it works is we've got these six holes along the sides and those correspond with these pegs that are on the back of the bezel. And it's basically just friction that holds the bezel into the back plate. There's not a whole lot that's pulling on it it's really just the hinge moving up and down within this slot. So it doesn't need to hold ridiculously strong, but it does need to be tight enough that it doesn't come off with repeated opening and closing. So it can be tough to get those tolerances right, and that tightness can even vary a little bit between one print and the next. Hopefully you put this together and you never need to take the bezel off. And since the screen is already soldered to the screen board, there's a good chance that you'll never even need to remove the bezel. But if for some reason you do, I've added these grooves here along the side and in the corners so that once it's attached, if you're very careful, you should be able to pop it off, even when it's inside the tent. But it can be kind of tight after the first time that you put it in. So what I recommend doing is, before you put it into the tent, go ahead and push the bezel in there all the way, and then very gently, with something like a screwdriver, go along the edges, and go ahead and remove it once. After that, it should loosen it up just enough that it'll hold nice and tight, but you can still remove it if you need to. So I definitely recommend doing that before putting it all together. All right, so I've got my Raspberry Pi Zero W attached to the button PCB from Helder. And as I mentioned before, we've got our battery monitor components integrated into the button PCB here. And then on this side, now we've got inputs for the safe shutdown button. Now with those software updates that I mentioned that Huli, who and I had been working on, this will actually do a lot more than just the safe shutdown. I'll get to that here in just a little bit. But I mentioned earlier that there was one more feature that Helder added after he sent me this prototype. On the right hand side of the underside of the button PCB, you see these couple of pads for audio input. That is for you to connect your sound card to, rather than connecting your speaker directly to it. And then on the front side where we have our button pads, you'll notice that there's a couple of pads for you to connect your speaker to. That'll just make it a lot easier to route wires and a lot cleaner because you can connect your speaker directly to these pads and then your sound card to the pads on the back. Okay, so I've got my Pi and my PCB attached to the 3D printed faceplate. And I've also got my speaker in there and if I were using the final version of these parts, I would have these two wires from the speaker attached to this side. But since this is a prototype, I'm gonna have to attach these to the sound card like previous versions. And then if you look at the front, you can see that I've added another hole on the right side here, opposite of the start and select buttons. 
That's what I'm gonna use for my safe shutdown button, which actually now is a function button. So as I showed you in another video, if you wanna add a safe shutdown button, you have a lot of options for that. You can pretty much just put it anywhere that it'll fit to put it right next to the power switch. I've seen some people put it on the side or even on the back, but a good spot that I found for it is on this side of the pie. That puts it right next to these pads that you can attach that button to. And then for the button itself, a six millimeter tall tactile switch works really well. If you drill your hole about 3.25 millimeters in from the side, there should be just enough room for this button to slide in there right next to the Raspberry Pi. So then what I'm gonna do is just put a couple blobs of glue on either side of that to hold it in place. And then I can attach these two wires to these two pads right here. All right, so there we go. That's our function button all wired up. So now I'll go ahead and connect the screen, put an SD card in there and show you what all the function button can do now. So the first boot might feel like it takes a really long time. That's because it actually resizes the file system so that it expands to take up your whole SD card the first time that it boots and then it reboots. So you're actually watching it boot up twice there and that's why the first boot takes a little while. Uh, we've got our battery icon here. On the latest image, I've got it defaulting to a customized material theme. I feel like it fits really well with the theme of the Minty Pie. And then you'll see a few more menu options than you had before. That's because we're updated to RetroPie 4.3, meaning that now we have access to favorite lists and then recently played games as well. So that's really handy to have. Within the RetroPie menu, if you scroll down, you'll see that now there's an update Minty Pie menu option. So what this does is as long as you're on Wi-Fi and you run this, it'll reach out and pull the latest update script from a GitHub repository, and then it'll run that update script so that if we run into anything that we need to tweak or fix later on down the road, you'll be able to do that simply by running this update option without having to even take out your SD card. And it'll also update any included customized themes, uh, Hulu Who scripts, and all that good stuff. So this is gonna be really handy for us to have in the future. Now, in addition to the customized material theme, one of our forum members named Will has put together a custom theme just for the Minty Pie. So if you go into the UI settings here, you can change it to TFT Minty Pie. So you can see it's kind of pseudo mod themed and it looks awesome. He did a really good job on it. So a big thanks to Will on the forums. All right, so about this function button. Initially, this was just gonna be a safe shutdown button, meaning you hold it down and it shuts down the system for you from anywhere so that you can do that quickly and safely. But after talking about it, we realized that there is a lot of potential here to do some really useful things with this button. So Hulihu has put in a lot of work on this and added some really nice features. For example, if you hold it down and you press the left and right buttons, you can see that it adjusts the volume and we get an on-screen indicator showing what the volume level is. And then if you hold it down and you push the B button, it'll toggle Bluetooth for us. And the A button will turn on and off the battery monitor icon in the top right. And the X button is a shortcut for shutting down the system now. And then if you press Y, then it'll toggle Wi-Fi on and off for you. And then also if you hold down the function key and you press the right shoulder button, that'll bring up a cheat sheet to show you what all the buttons do. And then one last feature that we haven't actually shown anybody yet, if you're using the latest screen, meaning the IPS display with the wider viewing angles, then if you hold down the function button and you press the up and down keys, you can actually control the brightness of the screen that way. Previous versions, we've kind of been locked at full brightness. So that's a really nice feature to have and one that we weren't really 100% certain that we'd be able to get working nicely. So that's why we haven't talked about it until now. So yeah, again, big thanks to Hulu. He's put in a lot of work and added a lot of really nice features, as you can see, that'll make it much more convenient to turn things on and off and adjust things on your Minty Pie. Now, the function button is actually optional. If you want, you have the option to use the start button as the shortcut key. This is the ideal way to do it because pressing this button doesn't 
produce any keystrokes that might interfere with something else that you're doing. Whereas pressing the start button will either pause whatever game you're playing or maybe bring up a menu and emulation station or something like that. So this is definitely the ideal way to go, but if for whatever reason you don't want to add another button, like for example, if you've already put together your Minty Pie and you just want to update the software to get all these features, then if you go in the SD card, in the boot partition, there's a folder called Minty Pie. And if you go inside there, you'll see a file called pinfile.txt. And that's the GPIO pin number that it watches and uses as the function key. So by default, that's set to GPIO number seven. But if you want to set that to be the start button, you can change that number to be 15 before putting it in your Raspberry Pi and booting it up. It functions exactly the same, except like I say, it might interfere with whatever you're doing by either pausing the game or bringing up a menu or something like that. All right, so I've got my power stuff all wired up and mounted inside the tin. It's very similar to last time using the micro lipo, except this time we're using that cheaper battery charger that I showed you earlier. The battery is connected to these two pads on the back of it, which you can see a little bit better here. See here at the top, we've got the battery positive and ground opposite of it. So I've got the battery connected to those, but then I've also got a second set of wires connected to the same pads. The red one, the positive one, goes to one of the pins on the switch, which is the far right pin. And then on the middle pin, I have a length of wire attached, which is what will be connected to our button PCB. I've also got a second wire attached to the ground pad, and this will be connected to the ground on the button PCB. And I've got my sound card all ready to go. I've already removed the USB USB jack and connected some wires to it just like last time. This time around though with the new 3D printed parts I'm not gonna have to take off this crystal. And inside the tin you can see this cutout right here and this ridge right next to it. That cutout is meant to line up with this chip right here on the sound card. So you can see there's just enough room for it to sit right there next to the charging board. So I'm gonna glue that into place and then I'll be ready to connect to the button PCB. These will go to the USB pads on the Raspberry Pi just like last time. Now as for powering your sound card, you have a couple of options. You can either connect it to the same pads on the charging board, or you can run it up to the button PCB once you install that, just like I did last time. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do since we already have two sets of wires connected to these pads. That could just get kind of messy. So once I get my button PCB in here, I'll be powering my sound card through that. And before I get to the button PCB, I'm gonna go ahead and put my screen in there since I've already tested it and I know that everything's working as it should. All right, so I've got everything connected here. It's pretty much just like it was last time. I've got my switch going up here to the VCC pad, the ground wire coming from the charging board up to the ground pad on the button PCB. Got my speaker hooked up to the sound card and the sound card being powered through the button PCB and the USB data lines connected to the Raspberry Pi up here at the top. LNR button's all connected. I've already turned it on and tested it out, so I know that I'm good to go as far as closing it up. There is one thing that I wanna mention real quick though. Another thing that we added to this software update is we turned on overclocking by default. A lot of people do that anyway. It makes it so that a lot of games that are just barely playable on a stock Raspberry Pi Zero are perfectly playable with a little bit of an overclock like some Game Boy Advance games and things like that. But something that I've noticed is it gets pretty hot with it overclocked, much warmer than it is on a stock Raspberry Pi Zero. And it's pressed right up against the battery here. I don't know for sure whether it's reaching any temperatures that are actually unsafe. I don't think that it is, but I like to play it safe just in case. So what I'm gonna do as a precaution is take a square of this silicone thermal pad. You can buy it in sheets off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the blog post that goes along with this. And I'm gonna put it on the battery, which should do a couple of things. It should act as a barrier so that they're not directly touching each other, but then it should also kind of spread the heat out so it's not all focused in one area right underneath the CPU. And just like last time, I'm gonna put some Kapton tape along the bottom of the board, just to make sure that nothing gets shorted on the tin or anything as I'm putting it together. Now I actually ran into an issue as I was closing it up, one that I haven't run into before. I think what happened was when I was attaching the screen backplate to the tin, I had it slid too far down. That is, I had it too far towards the back of the tin. And what that did was it made it so that this corner right here can catch on the tin as you're opening it from a closed position. 
So be careful as you're positioning the screen backplate to not put it too far down, otherwise it can catch on that. If you do catch yourself in that position, what you can do is you can take a file to that corner and file it down a little bit, and that seemed to help quite a bit in my situation. And there we go guys, that's it. Like I say, a lot of this is pretty much the same as with the last set of parts, but there were enough differences that I wanted to call out that I thought it was worth doing a video to show you how to put it together with the new ones. Well, I think that about does it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're putting together Minty Pie using the latest parts from Helder and the latest 3D printed parts, I hope this was helpful to you. Be sure to stop by and say hi on the forums and show off any projects that you're doing. And then we've also got a Discord server that we chat on as well. Stay tuned for some more projects coming up soon. I promise that I've got some stuff coming up that isn't Minty Pie. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.